If you've seen the movie Shrek, you're probably familiar with this scene. Shrek has just saved Fiona from the dragon and is taking her back to the land of Duloc to Lord Farquaad when, while passing through the forest, Robin Hood comes upon them and decides he needs to save Fiona from the ogre. And this is the scene where he tries to steal her away from Shrek. So Robin Hood swept Fiona up with a completely inelastic collision. Remember, that means that as they collide, they move together after the collision as one object. Let's simulate the situation in the lab. We're going to simulate the Robin Hood-Fiona situation with these two tennis balls that I've covered with Velcro so that they stick together. This ball will represent Fiona standing on the floor of the forest, and this ball will represent Robin Hood, who will come swooping down out of the tree, pick up Fiona, and then they will rise together as one object to a new height up in the tree. Let's assume that Robin Hood and Fiona have about the same mass, so each ball represents each person, each of mass M. I'm going to release Robin Hood from a height of 80 centimeters and pause the video here and try and figure out and predict how high the two of them will rise after the collision. Will it be 40 centimeters or one half the original height? 20 centimeters, one fourth the original height? Or 10 centimeters, one eighth the original height? I'll give you a hint, break it down into three parts. The first part is the transfer of Robin Hood's potential energy to kinetic energy. Then the second part is the collision, the conservation of momentum during the collision. And then the third part, the velocity after the collision translates to a kinetic energy, which will then change to potential energy as the two rise together uh, to a new final height. Pause the video here and try and figure it out and then come back and see if you're right. We'll perform the experiment and you can see if you correctly predicted the final height. Okay, here we go. Twenty centimeters, one fourth the original height. Let's look at the calculations. So here's our situation. We start here with potential energy MGH1, where H1 is the height before Robin Hood swings down out of the trees. Then Robin Hood's potential energy, gravitational potential energy, converts to kinetic energy due to conservation of mechanical energy. So that is step one of the problem. And we see here that the potential energy MGH1 is the same as the kinetic energy just before the collision, where V1 is the velocity of Robin Hood just before he scoops up Fiona. And solving that for V1, I get the square root of 2GH1. Then in part two of my solution, during the collision, momentum is conserved. So prior to the collision, the momentum is entirely with Robin Hood, so mv1, Robin Hood's mass times his velocity, and that is the same as the momentum after the collision, mv, where the mass is 2m now, Robin Hood plus Fiona, and their new velocity, v2, the velocity right after the collision. So it makes sense if momentum is conserved, if the mass doubles, the velocity cuts in half, and that's what we see, our new velocity v2 after the collision is one half the velocity before the collision. Then in part three, the kinetic energy associated with their new velocity v2 converts to potential energy as they rise up into the trees and all of their kinetic energy down here converts to potential energy up here, which is mgh, but the mass is now 2m and the, and the height is our new height h2. 
So that's what I've written here. One half mv squared is the kinetic energy right after the collision. 2m is the mass. V2 is the new velocity equals mgh potential energy at the top of the swing where m is 2m and the, and the height is h2. The 2m's cross off from either side. The 1 half cross multiplies over to the right to become a 2. And now I'm going to substitute for v2 what I got here, v1 over 2. And then I'm going to substitute in for v1 what I got up in part 1, that it's the square root of 2gh1. And when I do the algebra here and solve for h2, I see that h2 is 1 fourth of h1. And that's what we saw. The two, the two tennis balls rose to a height of 20 centimeters, which is one fourth of the starting height of 80 centimeters. So I'll leave it to you to decide if this is a realistic depiction of what could really happen.